Welcome back. At Gillette Stadium on Saturday, Benny Failhaber and the Revolution were primed to break out of an offensive slump as the Vancouver Whitecaps came to town. But first, after a midweek loss in Dallas, Toronto FC returned home on Saturday to host the Chicago Fire. In front of a loud crowd of BMO Field, Toronto had just one loss in six home matches this season, but even the support of the home crowd could not cure the Reds' ills, as their 15 goals conceded was the second most in the Eastern Conference. Aaron Vinter's side would have to plan for fire leading scorer Diego Chavez. The Fire had their second straight match against the Canadian side after a week eight scoreless draw with Vancouver. Chicago were looking to avenge last year's embarrassing 4 to 1 loss at BMO. With just seven points from eight matches, the Fire looked for clutch performances from former Toronto backup keeper John Conway and Chavez, whose four goals put him tied for second in the Golden Boot race entering week nine. Could the Fire finally earn their first away win of the year? Dan Kelly and Evan Whitfield called the action from Toronto, Ontario. Bazikos, the referee. And this match is underway. This is Plata now. Towards the area. Plata the low drive. 1-0 Toronto. You know he wants to go inside. He's just looking at the goal, measures it up. It's a great shot. Anticipated nicely by Pirari. He's got Oduro buzzing up the right side. Dominic Oduro checks his options, fires Fry to save. There's Oduro again. It's Pirari, the save made by Stefan Fry. It's a tough giveaway. It's Santos from distance. Santos measures it up. Here's positive. Here's Corbin Bowen racing into the box. Bowen fires, trying the short side. Stephen Fry read it. He's got some big targets in the box. Towards the back post. The header stopped by John Conway. Big chance here for the fire. Isolated one on one does well. Good ball across. Baruch just does what he has to do. He gets his body in front of it. It's a nice little move. Good ball to the far post, and Baruch just gets his knee on it. Now it's Corbin Ball. Paladini in fires. Oh, humongous stop. Stephen Fry. Robbery on Paladini. Here the setup roll. And Martina could make a clean strike in the final whistle sounds of this match in the Chicago Fire. The last three draws make it four straight draws now for the Chicago Fire. Times it didn't feel that good. We said sometimes a draw felt like a loss. Tonight, the draw feels like a win. Revolution fans were looking at Benny Failhaber to get the team back on track. But with just one assist and three shots in three matches since joining the club, the U.S. International's impact was not evident on the score sheet. Acknowledging his side's slumping offense, head coach Steve Nichol told the press that the team would seek an attacking player during the international transfer period in June. Shut out in four of their previous five matches, the Revs would be shorthanded, missing Usman Dabo and Marko Perovic. After a home draw against San Jose on Wednesday, Vancouver had tied three of their last five matches, but were looking for their first win since the season opener. On April 6th at Empire Field, the nine-man Whitecap side gave up a late goal and settled for a draw against New England. This time, Vancouver was at full strength for another attempt at their first away win in MLS. But midweek controversy saw Wednesday's hero Davide Cumiento express his frustration in his position. Could that be why Tater Torderson kept Vancouver's catalyst on the bench against the slumping Revs? Or was he resting him before Wednesday's neutral light Canadian championship? Brad Feldman and Jay Heaps provided the commentary from Gillette Stadium. This is uh, their seventh game in uh, 21 days. Off the kickoff, it's Vancouver 
their primary uniforms, wearing white, attacking from left to right. Rez trying to squeeze them early. Tierney with the yard. Oh, drops in the box to header. Oh, how did that not score? Chris Tierney again puts his ball in the box, and Jake DeMere just misses it, and that just goes off of, of Akul's back. Long ball finds Salgado, who shoots, and oh, it's just saved by Reese. Barnes throw for Joseph, attacking the ball with Demerit. Failhopper goes down right in front of the referee. Penalty kick. Up and over the foot, and there's the penalty. Nothing you can do, that's in the box, because Benny Failhopper's gonna hit that on a one-time volley, draws the foul. The captain's run up, the right-footed strike into the back of the net, he tucked it into the side netting. Nolly went the right way, but he couldn't prevent Shalry Joseph from scoring his fourth goal of the season. Fail Hopper's in, but he's offside. It's not going to be a goal. Not going to be a goal. Oh, oh. I don't know. I, for, yeah, that was great work in the truck, and I think where they froze it, yeah, that's, that, was, that was a miss. Now Wagner's ball in. Salgado's there, the header, and just beaten away there by Reef. Neossi weaves to the outside, has the lane to shoot, does so, and just has it saved. What a save by Jay Nolly. That's going in. Kofi to the outside. Tierney can't clear. Now Reese will race off his line to slide and cover. And there is the whistle for full time. The Revolution defeat Vancouver Whitecaps FC 1-0 and gain their first victory since the win over Sporting Kansas City here three weeks ago. The Colorado Rapids continued their East Coast trip with a visit to the nation's capital on Saturday. The big news out of Colorado's camp was that the injury-plagued team would lose another one of its regulars as forward Omar Cummings was diagnosed with an ankle sprain. Then came word that fellow forward Caleb Folon would miss Saturday's match as well, leaving an already compromised attack with even less skill. But the return to health of Connor Casey and midfielder Sana Niasi shored up the Colorado side looking to extend its unbeaten streak to four games. D.C. was playing their third straight home match and the home cooking had helped as they had earned four points in the previous two at RFK. United allowed only one goal in two matches, partly thanks to moves by head coach Ben Olsen. Rookie Perry Kitchen and reserve Daniel Willard shored up a previously porous defense. The stakes were high for the Golden Boot leader Charlie Davies as he continued to push for a spot on the Gold Cup roster in front of U.S. national team head coach Bob Bradley, who was at the match. Tony Lamarzi and Thomas Rongin called the action from RFK Stadium. The referee is Terry Vaughn, and we're all set here and underway at RFK Stadium. James Smith again curling it in toward the spot, deflected, it's loose in the box, and they score. Jamie Smith just plays that good ball in again, kicked it cleared initially, bounces around it, and Drew Moore stays with it. We saw the attacking players for DC warming up. Davies sitting again, down I'm not a the doctor, field, but so, I, yeah, I, I, there's I know. Wrong. I know players, and it's his hamstring. Has touched it a few times. What a bad moment, too. Head coach here for the national That's team, right. you Bob Bradley. Bob Bradley's here watching. Sort of has yep. Davey, you know, on the radar to possibly make that Gold Cup roster. This is going to be a setback for him in terms of making it back to the national team. And Gwen is with him. Chris Pontius skips around into the box. Kamura coming from behind. Penalty! 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 Pontius is clearly in the box here and gets tangled up. By, That's a penalty. It is a PK as well, no doubt. Pontius, Pontius trying board. to equalize from the spot. Pontius shoots, and it's a goal. DC United back on level terms. And DC United now going for the win here at home. Here is Pontius again. Cuts around Kimura. Still coming forward. Deflected. It's alive. Pontius onto it again. Pontius! Pontius! It's alive for Inguania. Shoots, and he missed it. There it is again. Ball stays alive. Shoulders. The defender well. Pickens, a good starting point, forcing a mistake. And there's the final whistle, only 25 seconds after they restarted with the sub and with the yellow card. At any rate, they'll have to share the points. DC United with the second half equalizer, but they could not find the game winner, and the final score is 1 1. We'll head to Rio Tinto Stadium after the break, where the Houston Dynamo tried to end the host's 28 game home unbeaten streak in league play. 